in the beginning, you was kind of was a rap battler over there at the Good Life, right? Yeah, 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 Is that yeah. where it all started for you? On yeah, 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 the Good Life, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was an open mic spot on um, Thursday nights in Los Angeles, right? So everybody, if you want, you call yourself a rapper or MC and all that whole type of shit, you had to go down there if you was really serious about your crap and then get on that stage and, and do your thing. And you was either gonna be liked or they was gonna boo your ass. So, you know what I mean? We did our thing and then we started meeting cats like uh, uh, Freestyle Fellowship, Hip Hop Clan, which is LA Cooter Rifle Man, and um, a few other cats, you know what I mean? But uh, but the the term underground hip hop kind of came from that place right there because it was some people that, that was doing music from there that, that refused the record deal. So they chose to be like, you know what, fuck them, I'm, we gonna stay this. And that's where the, that underground hip hop term came from right there. Although some of the um, artists there did get record deals and get signed. Or whatever. Oh, is that, is that right? Yeah, like you know, like free stuff. We had shit. Uh, it was a guy that gave us a car one night. We were supposed to be. It was a thing called Black Ground Entertainment with Jive Records. It was a subsidiary of uh, Jive Records, but they artist was Aaliyah, and so we they was they was looking at us like they wanted us to be like their first rap group. But we kind of like fucked that off. We didn't really. We weren't recording no studios at the time. We gave them a little tape. They listened to it. They were like, come back when you get get in the studio, and we'll probably fuck with y'all. We just never did. And then uh, um, come to find out, they said uh, 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 at one point. The nigga came to our house and said, yeah, uh, uh, easy, they, it, Ruthless interested in fucking with y'all. And we, we like, oh, nah, man, we ain't fucking with y'all. We fucking with Afterlife Records, which was uh, the started by some um, people that came from the Good Life Cafe. So, you know, so. Now, the, uh, the Good Life Cafe was, was really a place that sold, like, vitamins. Wheat grass and yeah, shit like all that. Yeah, all that stuff that people are talking about now. It was a health food yeah. store. And it opened in 89, and mm -hmm. to be doing that in 89 here in the hood was like... And it'd be ran by some black folks. Yeah, no, no, one, no one was doing that. Now you got a, a bunch of them popping up. You got um, on, on Slauson, you have Simply Wholesome. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, That's a dope spot, too. But um, in 89, uh, hip hop was still kind of young in, in LA, mm -hmm. and uh, that was also kind of revolutionary that they would have an open mic for rappers. Now, according to uh, some information, they say that that uh, Ice Cube, Snoop Dogg, Common, Will I Am, and Macy Gray attended open mic at Good Life. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, I never seen uh, I, don't, I don't never I ain't never seen Snoop Dogg, but I know the um, my homie he, um, he used to take Corrupt to the to Death Row to record some of that shit. I seen Corrupt a few times, and then I seen Exhibit in the park a lot. He used to be with um, Voodoo and um, I seen Razkaz, you know Razkaz. All them dudes, just before they was all, a lot of people, I'm not gonna necessarily say got they start from there, but if you was a rapper and you was serious about your shit, you passed through the good life. Period. You, you passed through the good life. Cause it was a different climate back then. He was like, you know, I mean, a lot of the, the, you, like back then it was a lot of people that was getting signed. Like if, if you could stand in a circle of people and rap, like that, you had to be that type of animal as far as that go to, to be considered Dope, or you know, what I mean, even though they had their they little uh, couple of acts that just was, you know, tax write off signed artists or whatever, but for the most part, like Snoop, he was a nigga that he would stand in a circle and rap with you, like, you know, what I mean, you just had to be that type of dude back then. And that that Good Life Cafe was that's where those type of people are uh, met at. The majority of people gave a fuck about the crap that they was on, and you that came out there to get their shit off. So you say that a uh, freestyle fellowship they were kind of discovered there because that's actually a group. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So talk about that and and. Well, I, okay, I know they 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 um see with freestyle fellowship the way they they get down. What see when you, when you listen to rap music you listen to rap music. I was listening to rap and all that type of shit. But then when you go to the Good Life Cafe and you see these dudes doing their thing, it show you a whole different perspective of how niggas get on. Like the way they. They was just unique with they stayed. It was a whole it, it just opened up a whole nother door to a whole nother way you could do it. And they like the originators of of, the, uh, of that particular type of style, but they just they sounded just unique. And then it was a lot of dudes from the Good Life Cafe that was like that, but they just was like, I would say they like the uh they like the the godfathers of the to me of the good life. They was like the they that's them dudes, you know, for their first shit. Mike and I, Mike and I, AC Alone, Peace, Self Jupiter, you know what I mean? Are any of those guys still around? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we just we just seen them. Uh, 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 Mike and I, yeah, we in AC Long. We was just at the. Uh, it was a guy named Mean Green. He just passed away. Mean Green was from a crew called Western Hemisphere, but he was signed with Patchwork back uh, back in the day. Patchwork Recordings was like Western Hemisphere, Voodoo, Razkaz. I mean, you know what I mean? But, but Mean Green just passed away. He was like the one that ran the turf markets out here, as far as the the weed selling shit and all that. But he passed away, so we all gathered up to do a, 
a video, which was, was a guy named uh, Elliot Koo, a.k.a. Rifleman. He put together a video, which is a song we did paying homage to the memory or life of being green. And they was all there to answer your question. So, so, so when did you get inspired to, to start recording? Because you were going there in the 90s. Mm -hmm. And then at some point, I guess you decided, hey, I'm about to start recording. Yeah, 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 well, yeah, yeah, yeah. So they they kind of took us under their wing at the Good Life. You know what I mean? So then they had this, uh, they used to have a, uh, well, really the guy that I was telling you about, the most valuable film guy, too, he was a main dude from the Good Life. You know what I mean? He was one of the main dudes, L.A. Cool, a.k.a. the Rifleman. So for some strange reason, he took us under his wing. We learned a lot from that guy. We used to always pick us up every Thursday when our mom was like, I'm not taking y'all that day. For some strange reason, she would let him pick us up every Thursday. We go in there. Every Thursday, sharpening our tool as far as you know, I mean, skill and all that type of shit. Learning how to record from from being around this dude. Learning how to write on the spot and all that type of shit. We learned all that from that guy about him taking us under his wing because he seen something in us that maybe we didn't see. You know what I mean? So, but that stemmed from the good life. You know, what I mean? that's how we really started recording, recording professionally. Then it was a guy, these guys uh, 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 called CVE. They had their own studio called the Shack, which was on 82nd in Normandy. So we would all, you could just go over there any time of the day, and these them niggas got beats going, and they, you know what I mean? And, you know, projects just cracking. And you come over there, just write some shit and sharpen your, sharpen your tool as far as your craft. You know what I mean? And uh, you, you always was solo? No, 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 no. I was with a crew called the, <laughs> called the East Side Bastards. That was uh, me, my brother, and a guy named Misfit. And then we put this little tape off called The Biggest of the Bass, the Baddest, right? But that that tape right there, it's still people to this day that be like, hey man, uh, 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 you still got that tape? You still got that tape? It, it was a lot of people that that uh, fuck with that shit, but you know, it was just one. I don't even got that tape no more. But that's how we kind of got popular as the East Side Bastards. And the, the 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 biggest and the baddest was a collection of songs. Yeah, yeah like well, yeah, yeah, it was yeah, it was like I think like eight songs. Yeah, yeah, eight songs after Afterlife Records. You know, I guess that would be called like a cult. Classic. It wasn't bit really as big as I thought it was, but it, it was kind of it got a following. People that always stood at the dash. People said, "What the hell, my nigga? You talk about some shit when I was 16. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 43. I ain't got that shit no more." And you didn't save it, huh? Yeah, I ain't got none of that shit. Damn. Thanks for watching StreetTV.net. If you're not subscribed, please hit that button below and click the bell to receive alerts and notifications. Feel free to comment below so you can give us your feedback and be sure to watch the two related episodes to the right. If you want to support this platform or follow us on social media, visit the links in the description. And thanks for watching StreetTV.net.